Hello everyone and welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And today we're going to be giving you our live reaction to Connor Cody signing for Everton on a loan deal. Uh, we'll start off with you. We'll, we'll get first of all. I'm joined here by Terry and James. How are you, lads? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Good, good, good. Right. So first of all, Terry, what? How do you feel about the signing? I'm quite happy with the signing. Um, I think it's a very sensible move, especially on loan with an option to buy. I, I, even, I would have been fine signing them. That, that's how confident I am that it'll be a good fit. But with, with you know the financial situation as it is, the loan with the option is is so much better. I mean, he's a good defender, first and foremost. A lot of people who are against the, the deal, like I obviously can't tell people how to think, but I think the biggest criticism is, oh, everyone cites his strengths and it's all leadership, personality. Nobody mentions what he's like on the pitch. It's all off-the-pitch stuff. I actually think as a just on the pitch player, I think he's a good defender. I think he, his distribution's good. He's a good passer of the ball. He plays in the middle of a back three. And you know, standard um, you know, old fashioned thinking is that the, the worst passer of the three centre backs goes in the middle usually, uh, because they're gonna see less of the ball. The outside ones are gonna be distributing, which is probably why we've seen Tarkovsky on um, left rather than in the centre. But I think Cody's a really good passer of the ball, and I think uh, he's going to be a great fit and alongside Tarkowski uh, I can't claim this shout for myself this is, uh, I heard this from Ped on Toffee TV but it, the two of them could be another Stubbs and Weir just that steady you know solid foundation of a team that keeps us uh, keeps us looking strong so I'm, I'm quite happy with the signing James what are your thoughts? Yeah same as Terry yeah um, I think it's I think it's a good move. I think it's a smart move. Um, you know, obviously, I, I've kind of said for the last what eighteen months or so, he's getting in these England squads for for a reason because he, he's good enough. And then, as you say, he brings all this off the pitch stuff, on the pitch stuff when he's playing. He's captained England for, for periods of games, and he's he's going to bring a huge amount of leadership, which we've lacked massively in in defence for for a while, and you know, on, over the pitch as a whole. And, you get all those aspects put together. He's a, he's a fantastic pass to the ball. I think he's a solid enough defender, but his fitness as well is just brilliant. The same with Tarkovsky. I think both of them bring massive amounts of fitness. I think Cody before, obviously the weekend, the best one Premier League game since the Bulls have been promoted or something ridiculous like that, which is just insane for a player to go and not, not get injured for so long, especially he's getting towards his 30s now. So that's massive for Everton. It's massive that you can rely on. Um, another defender like Tarkovsky and to be fair someone like Mason Holgate's very rarely injured as well obviously Godfrey and Mina having their issues and then Michael Keane's out sometimes as well so um, I think if we can have some sort of a solid foundation being built this summer that's a massive improvement for me and uh, yeah I've got to say I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the deal I think it's smart the way it's obviously coming on loan and we'll see how he gets on by the end of the season um, but I think it's a really smart move by Everton and, and yeah, no, no problems here with it yeah, and we've all mentioned how Conor Cody has experience in and around the England squad. Ten caps, one goal for England. And one thing we hear a lot about is, like you mentioned, how vital he is behind the scenes, even if he doesn't play. He's a leader. He's one of those people who's quite easy to get along with. Do you think that'll play a big part in our squad? Because it seemed like a long for the longest time there's always been this disjoint within the squad. Yeah, was that to me? Sorry, or... <laughs> Ivory, whoever answers first. Go on, go on. yeah, go on. Uh, yeah, I, I think that is probably one of the the best things about him is his, is his leadership, is his, you know, his, his sort of um, his character. It's quite a, it's quite an overused saying in football character, but he, he definitely does has it. He, he brings a level of standards which I think is missing from the club on and off the pitch. Like there's the Seamus Coleman who, who let's be honest, he, he's now the longest serving uh, active Premier League player. Like he can't. He can't do it for everyone. He's got to have people on the pitch with him as well or in the squad who, who have that sort of desperate to win, don't accept like slipping of standards mentality. And that's what Cody's got. Like he's he's come through at Liverpool, as everyone knows. And he's learnt off, you know, players like Jamie Carragher and players like that. You know, people might not like him and that's fine. But no one could ever point the finger and say, oh, he was a crap player or he had low standards or he was a he was a knobhead or anything like that. No, he clearly, you know, he's come from that school and that's what we need. We this is we've had this problem at Everton for a while. And I think it it it's a double thing. It's 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 personality and also a football intelligence thing. How many times have you seen Everton defenders? 
when something happens in the box, like a shot and it's a save, it ricochets and they're asleep for the second ball or the second phase of play or the goal goes in and they put their heads down and then, uh, you know, they, they, the stomach falls out of the team and then they concede again straight away. Connor Cody is fighting for everything he's got with everything he's got to try and stop a goal going in. And when a goal does go in, he's up straight away and he's screaming at his defenders and the people around him and, telling them to get back in position. We've, we've got a lot of wet wipes at the club who just haven't got the stomach for a fight. It doesn't matter how good they are as players. So we're going to need, and we do need, players like Cody and probably Tarkowski who've got a little bit more between the ears, a little bit more upstairs, who just won't accept these low standards. I just want to say, if nothing else, I just want to stop conceding two goals whenever we concede one. It's always quick fire. If he can cut that out, he's worth his weight in gold. Yeah, I think it's one of those and where, you know, Cody's one of those players similar to Tarkovsky, which brings that, you know, that leadership and also that quality. They're both fantastic players, you know. The bloody Connor Cody was one of those being talked for big moves a season or two ago. James Tarkovsky was getting linked with £50 million moves to West Ham, you know. It's a real turnaround and, you know, feel free to tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've had a real solid centre-back partnerships probably since Jagielka and Stones, even maybe before then. It's one of those where, you know, we were decent defensively under Carlo Ancelotti, but that's because we were playing four centre-backs as our back four. You know, it's one of those where it looks like we finally have that solidity in defence, or at least not that leadership in defence, to stop the the leakiness and just the overall stupid mistakes that our centre-backs do make. Is that how you feel, James, about the whole new revamp in the centre-back position? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think as well it's important because he's brought in two centre backs who can play in a back five or a back three, whatever you want to call it. I think it frustrated me last season. I've seen us play in that that shape. I just felt we didn't have the players who could really shoot in. I think we've got in Connor Cody, who's uh, been one of not the best sort of um, centre back in a back five in that period of time. You know, also playing so consistently under two different managers now, and he's been part of a really good Wolves team. So sort of beating hearts of, of them alongside, you know, like if you're Neves or whoever it might be, but he's been excellent for them. And I think Tok you can really do that as well. And I think, you know, I didn't look at this squad and think, okay, we probably need two centre backs because I felt like we had five or six, if you include like Welsh and, and Branflake. But obviously, Branflake's gone. Mean is injured again already. Godfrey's out again already. And it's interesting because obviously, before those last two got injured, you're already being linked to Cody. So, um, it felt like it's something that Lampard wanted to do and I think I'm happy that we're signing a player who can sort of fit in with the vision of what, what they want to try and do. It's not going to be square pegs and round holes. You mentioned obviously you haven't so many centre backs across the back four and uh, I'm just hope the days like that are gone now. I feel like we can pick out a bit of depth and feel like we're, we're actually going in a, in a direction now because I think one thing we were mostly impressed on Saturday was the team seemed to have a bit of shape, seemed to have a bit of plan, it seemed to have you know, a nice bit of balance to it. And this has been a massively imbalanced squad for the longest time now since Mishiri came in, really. It's been all over the gap. So, um, I, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. I think he's going to be a good player for Everton. And, you know, I think it's obviously going to be a nice season ahead of you not having to worry about players pulling up 24-7 because you can finally got two centre-backs there and they're very, very, really injured. Can I just say as well, that a, lot, a lot of the... You know, a, a criticism of the move is we should be buying young players to develop them and, and so on and so forth. And I, and I do agree with that. What people miss, and other clubs have made this mistake, is that you cannot have young players and develop them if there isn't a strong foundation and structure around them to for them to develop. If you just have a team of young players, then when they go through, you know, wobbly spells of form, there's no one they can lean on, no one they can rely on. Like... It, the, the Man United pundits say it all the time that when the class of 92 came through, there was all, you know, a season pros around them so they could properly develop. So if, you, if we're bringing in the likes of Cody and Tarkowski, for, you know, they use just them two, you know, at the time of recording, the Drissagana Gay isn't finished, but, you know, we're going to bring him in. Their level of consistency and performance allows the likes of Nathan Patterson and uh, Vitaly Mikolenko and, you know, Almanzo Onana, Onana these young players will have the opportunity to improve the team and improve their own game and kick on if they've got that around them. You can't just have everyone be young and one or two older players because it doesn't work. It's too imbalanced. So if we're playing a back three, which clearly we are, 
then, you know, all right, he's injured now, but Godfrey will come back and Godfrey will be the third man in that back three when he's back. And there'll be, you know, be probably Holgate or maybe Michael Keane, who knows, or even Seamus Coleman uh, for the next few months. But when Godfrey's back, he'll be in the back three with them too. And his game will improve and kick on by having that sort of partnership with the two of them. He'll learn from them and he's, he'll be able to play his natural game and improve because he's not got... I'm sorry, someone like Michael Keane next to him who's making his own mistakes and he can't you know he can't really rely on. And the same goes for Jared Branthwaite when he comes back. I think the club have got, you know, big designs on him and I, and I, he's you know someone I really rate. When he comes back from his loan to PSV, he'll probably be in and amongst the mix with these players and he'll learn from them. And then when, you know, two or three, four years' time, when these players are 33, 34 and we're sort of to phase them out and they're not starting every week, they'll still be in and around the place to to sort of support these players. You cannot just drop a load of young players in and expect them to get better because you've got to also keep your place in the Premier League. So having, within reason, a core of experienced players, especially in defensive positions, I think is vital. Yeah, it's one of those where if you do look at the people saying we should sign younger players, if you look at the centre-back position, like you said, Terry, it's Jared Branford, who's, what, 19, 20, 20, I think he's around that area. Reese Wilds, who seems to get be getting a lot of props from the club, who's only around 18. You know, you look at that, and then you've got all these young centre-backs, and we talk about someone like Jared Bramford, who probably will get some European experience playing with PSV, if they're in Europe, which I can imagine they are. So it's one of those where, if they, for example, when they come back and you've got these three young players, giving them people like Conor Cody and James Tarkovsky to learn from and to develop from, it's only going to help them. It's a similar thing to what I said when we spoke about Amadou Onana a few days ago. I said, it looks like we've signed Adris Aguirre and then Adris Aguirre's replacement. Onana might develop into more than that. I have seen comparisons to players with a bit more of an attacking flair than Ghana gave. But it's one of those where it's smart business from the club. And I think, you know, if this is Kevin Fellwell doing this, I've been really impressed with the transfer window so far to say we have limited funds where we have more than I thought we did considering we're about to spend quite a lot of money on Onana but I think it's been really impressive and I think Conor Cody's only a sign of that the standards will improve and you know he's only bit, there's two big complaints I've noticed about Conor Cody one Liverpool fan which I couldn't care less about to be honest with you he wants to play for the club which means he's going to put effort in for the club I believe his son's in the academy if he couldn't if he couldn't stand the club why would his son play for the club you know it's stuff like that and then the other one is the dreaded back three, which to Everton fans is probably the worst, some Everton fans anyway, is the worst thing to ever happen to football, especially with the way we've played it in the past. But I can imagine this looks like it will be a back three from now on with Frank. But the one complaint we always had about a back three is the fact that we didn't have the personnel for it. Conor Cody comes in, personnel fitted for a back three. Does this make you feel, Terry, a lot more optimistic about playing in the back three, having a player like Cody come in who's so used to that system? Yeah, 100%. Because I've, I've, I was in that camp myself going, we cannot play a back three. The players cannot play it. Um, but that was a lot of the time. It was Michael Keane can't play a back three in any of the positions. He just never could. He was a back four low block player. Um, Seamus Coleman couldn't be a right wing back. He still can't, in my opinion. But now, you know, you look at the players we brought in. Nathan Patterson, he plays that for uh, for his national team, Scotland. Connor Cody is comfortable in it. Well, he's very comfortable in it. A lot of people say he can only play in a back three. Um, Holgate's best games for Everton have more or less been in a back three. Like when We had a short spell under Ronald Koeman where he was playing in a back three and he, he excelled there. Like, some of these are all going to be... Something just happened behind me there. Um, yeah, it's got a ghost. Um yeah, so the players now are more suitable for that formation and it's being coached by a manager who likes it. And the director of football, Kevin Thelwell, has wrote a book on the three at the back system. So and he was at Wolves when they played it. So he will recruit for that formation. And then, you know, if Lampard is not the Everton manager in the near future, you know, I would imagine he would be, but if he isn't then the next manager will probably be someone who will be looked at saying, oh, how do you feel about the three at the back? Because that's what our squad's like. And that's the way it'll work. So I'm, I'm more than happy with it. And now that we can play it. Yeah, James, have you got similar thoughts? Is there anything you'd like to add? No, I mean, I think it's exactly the same. Yeah, I think, you know, it's not only the centre-back, it's the, it's the wing-backs as well. They can play it. And I think 
it doesn't have a centre mids as well because I mean Andre Gomez is just never gonna. I mean I don't know what system he would work in, but it's only going to be in a two midfield where you have to do a lot of running. But now we've got between a Wobi, Anana, Gay, you know, even a land to a degree to Corey. Obviously these are now running midfielders who can get about the pitch, and I think that's massively important with the back five or. Or three, I want to shake because I think there's a lot of cuffing that needs to be done. You don't want your centre backs getting dragged out all over the shop. So I think it's it's the squad as a whole, which is developing massively, obviously. Um, I know there's obviously improvement still to be made at, at sort of the sharp end of the pitch, but I think at the end of the day, if you if you're keeping the score to nail, you've always got a big chance of, of getting positive results. And I think between Cody, between Tarkovsky, Patterson feels like a new signing really, doesn't he? Because he hadn't played, he only played one game in, in the FA Cup before this season. So it's almost like a completely new look back five because you've now got three players there who you know played one game for Everton between the three and before the start of this season. And I think Tokovsky passed him two of the most impressive players on the weekend. So I think if you add, add Cody to that now, it, it's really exciting. And I think it's good to see Lampard sort of getting what he what he needs, but also that kind of idea Terry spoke about him. It's a director of football who likes to play this system as well. It's not just the manager. It's this idea that if Lampard Hopefully he does really well at Everton and goes on to somewhere else. That'd be fine. I'd be delighted to imagine he did a good job at Everton for a change. But he then got a squad. He then got a dress football. You still want to play with that system and the squad won't be as horribly imbalanced as it was, you know, back in the last season, massively, but also the three or four years before. So that's really important to me. Yeah. And before we end things off, I'm going to ask you both, uh, starting off with you, Terry, how do you think Conor Cordy's year, possibly more if the loan-to-buy option is used. How do you think Conor Cody's Everton career is going to go, even if it's one just one season? I think um, it's pretty easy to predict. He'll come in, he'll go straight into the team, he'll be the middle of a back three and he'll be really solid and we'll be much better defensively as a result of that. We're going to need to be because the goals are going to you know, be not as easy to come by because we're, you know the situation at the top end of the pitch. So, uh, if we can, if he helps us switch to be a more solid, robust team, that's all that I ask for. And I think he's going to do that. And I could easily see us uh, taking up the option. I think, I think the loan with an option is not under the provision that we might say no. I think we know full well we're going to sign him permanently, but it just, it's a bit of, uh, you know, financial hokey pokey, you know, like just moving things around and we'll, play, we'll pay it next year's accounts rather than this year. And yeah, they, put it this way. Not just for a final word on Cody, Wolves are letting him go with a ve- in a very one sided deal to a Premier League rival. Now, that's not because he's crap or he doesn't play or he's on massive wages and they don't want him. He was playing, uh, he's only really missed the last game, the first game of this season because he was on the bench. And every other, like, for the last seven years before that, he played practically every game. He's not like on, he's not the. Like, on the get rid list for Wolves, but they just think so highly of him that they're going to let him out on sort of sweetheart terms for him and for his his new club being us because that's how highly he's thought of by his current club that they, they're willing to do that for him and basically get made mugs of in this in this move because the Wolves fans online are not looking at this and thinking, yes, I'm glad he's gone. They're like, what are we doing? Why are we letting him go? And certainly why are we letting him go like that? Yeah, and James, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I was going to say exactly the same. I think this idea that I think he wants this move and he'll come back so sort of where he grew up or, or going a lot, a lot closer to home anyway. I think that's massively important for him. And it's going to be interesting to see what the interview's like because I've never really talked about Everton before. I've heard him speak about Liverpool, obviously. Obviously, I've heard talk about Jamie Carragher. And I think I've always kind of thought of him as a, as a Liverpool lad and then obviously he scored that goal last season, which was massively disappointing. But It'll be interesting, obviously, when you know I get to watch see what to see what he said and and um, obviously what his thoughts are on joining Everton because I think it's a move I would never have seen coming to be honest with you. But I think as Terry says, Wolves are just you know been so pleased with the years of service he's had. I think him and Neves were watershed moment signings for them, weren't they? Really, in the fact that they had this meteoric rise and they were both perfect for Espirito Santo and they've both been done really good things under Bruno Large and they're also letting him go when. It's not like they. It's not like Wolves about growing them either. It's that Wolves are, I think, going to be in a really tricky spot this season and getting rid of their captain. 
I find absolutely mental from their perspective. I think they're going to really have a, a tougher year this year than they are over the last few seasons. And I think getting rid of Conor Cody seems like a very strange move, but yeah, I think it is just a case of that's what they think about him. They think he deserves to kind of go and get the move he wants. And it's, you see it sometimes, don't you, where players are kind of let go towards the end of their contracts because they want to get a move and because they've done so much for the club. It's like, you know, they can kind of let it go over the last couple of years or so, but I think it's going to be a really good move for us and, you know, hopefully the Everton injury guards don't, don't strike again. Well, let's hope not, because from what I've heard, he's only had one minor injury over the last seven years. But knowing our luck, his leg will explode when he does his first interview or something like that. But anyway, thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy, please make sure to like and subscribe. Check the Toffee Blues out on Twitter and check Terry and James out on Twitter. They'll be linked down below. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time.